Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, enchiladas y burritos. Teatro Sin Fronteras, Teatro Without Borders has begun. So here we go. Is the Eurocentric plantation paradigm getting you down? Is the Eurocentric plantation paradigm and melancholic pandemic funk getting you down, down? Is the Eurocentric plantation paradigm and white terrorists who stormed the Capitol on January 6th, inspired by the Agent Orange of Chaos to cause a coup in the United States of Amnesia, and they actually paraded the Confederate flag in the Capitol Rotunda. Are they getting you down? Down? Funky down, down? I ask because my big question is, how long will white wokeness last? Because the your such a plantation paradigm is getting me down. So I ask because I am brown, therefore I am suspect. I am Latino, therefore I am spicy. I studied out in college, therefore I am unemployed. I often speak in Spanish to confuse my gringo audiences. Therefore, I'm a pain in the conceptual derriere of monolingual gatekeepers and hegemonic cultural epistemologies. I often use big words. Therefore, I am superfluous. Ow! Así que le pedimos a Legua. Le pedimos a Legua. We petition Legba to open wide the pathways. Le pedimos a Legua. Le pedimos a Legua. We petition like Ba to open wide the crossways and we say Ashe. We petition like Ba to open wide the pathways for people crossing every day, every hour, every second to reclaim what was ours in the first place. Porque la tierra nunca tenía fronteras because the land never had any border. And we remember Yemaya, Oshun, Shango. I don't even know what's in there anymore. Pero está rico y suave como yo. Ooh. So we petition like Bob to open wide the pathways for people crossing every day, every hour, every second to reclaim what was ours in the first place because the land never had any borders. Porque nuestros corazones no tienen fronteras because our hearts have no borders. Because this performance ritual, este rito performativo con verbalas, no tiene fronteras. This performance spoken word ritual has no borders. Because that Rio Grande scar, especially at the, at the border there with Mexico and the United States, that is a colonial scar. Es una cicatriz colonial en la espalda con nuestra Pachamama tierra. Un, unnatural border so our people crossing every day every hour every second are crossing to reclaim the land and what was ours in the first place so we petition like Ba to open wide the pathways because when I see these dark faces burnt by the sun purple black like the beaten earth and doing screens from one century to another almost finished like old souls before crossing over with a cruel history of conquest and abuse like a people like a people in the wounded body of an orphan child before God abandoned by a criminal governance forced to cross a colonial scar escaping political persecution escaping economical despair crossing crossing cruzando cruzando supuestamente a la fuente de la democracia, cruzando supuestamente la fuente de la democracia, cruzando, y los llaman criminales, los llaman ilegales, crossing into the so-called beacon of democracy, only to be criminalized, called illegal, called aliens, dehumanized. Let me tell you something, Batos, let me tell you something. I am brown, therefore I am suspect, but I speak true to the perverse abuse of power in the United States of amnesia. Let me tell you something. No human being is illegal. No human, no human, no human, no human being is illegal. No human being is illegal. Ningún ser humano es ilegal. Ningún ser humano es ilegal. Ningún 
ser humano es ilegal. No tengo paciencia para gente sin conciencia. No tengo paciencia para gente sin conciencia. I got no patience now for people without consciousness. I got no patience now for people without consciousness. Since the pilgrims, since the pilgrims, since the pilgrims arrived without papers, why were they not supported with Columbus and his three ships? They, the Europeans, the Europeans were the first illegal aliens in hemispheric Americas. Take that to the bank, baby, darling, because the United States of Amnesia deduces you to embrace forgetting that the so-called beacon of democracy was founded on a near genocide extermination of native people, indigenous people, the land stolen, stolen and transformed into perverse private property because the United States of Amnesia seduces you to embrace forgetting that the so-called stolen lands and the so-called capitalist empire, the so-called capitalist empire was built on stolen lands and the enslavement of African people, men, women, and children, children and cages we've seen them right here in the catholic port slave city of new orleans let's there to remember baby because the biggest job of the poet is to remember against a culture that pimps amnesia let's there to remember we've seen black children and slave children in cages right here in the catholic slave port city because the french and the spanish were brutal colonizers and bienville i could give two I could give nothing about that brutal French colonizer. Let's stand to remember because the United States of Amnesia seduces you to embrace forgetting. And let's stand to remember that there is no French Quarter. No, that's a mistaken moniker, a mistaken moniker, a lie that's been perpetrated. It's the Spanish Quarter rebuilt by the Spanish colonials, enslaved African people and free people of color. There's no Spanish there's no French Quarter, it's the Spanish Quarter. Let's dare to remember, let's break down all the mythologies because the United States of Amnesia seduces you and break forgetting that the entire territories of the Northern West territories, the territories of Mexico from Texas to California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado were stolen manifest destiny uncle sam's hunger to invade and steal those territories and the rightful mexican landowners became a subjugated underclass immigrants foreigners in their own land english the forced language in spanish was broken on the backs of every child forbidden to speak it let's dare to remember baby because it's my job to remember it's my job to remember and you could google it google the guadalupe hidalgo treaty of 1848 google it and you will find you will find that you will find that important information that's not taught to you google it because latinos we love to google i love to say google 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 in fact Google is an old Latin term. In fact, Google is an old Aztec term from the Aztec goddess, Google gets a quatle, which means look shit up and say, know your history in the United States of amnesia that seduces you to embrace forgetting. Google gets a quatle, look up, Google the 1848 Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty. And right here, right here in the United States of amnesia, here in New Orleans, the Louisiana Endowment for the Humanities, yes, the Louisiana Endowment for the Humanities has published this tricentennial anthology called New Orleans in the World, 1718 to 2018. And what have they done? They disappeared a lot. American immigrant community, they disappear as white scholars, white gatekeepers have brutally cultural deported. Let's dare to remember. I've been holding them accountable for the last three years, but they, but they, but they retreat into the safety of their white privilege. Let's dare to remember and let's call it out. Así que al fin en los oídos despiertan su conciencia, ajusten sus cinturones filosóficos. Do not be afraid, amigos y amigas, porque se habla español aquí. Do not be afraid of the Spanish language because tostitos are here to stay. In fact, we are new and improved fat free and good for the economy. So if you are bilingually challenged, sharpen your ears, awake your subconscious and adjust your philosophical seatbelts because it's still early in the new millennium of the 21st century. Así que América, as in Central and South America as well, because let's remember it's the hemispheric Americas, Americas. You love the food, you love your huevos rancheros from Mexico, you love your pupusas from El Salvador, you love your ceviche from Ecuador, America, wake up and smell the café con leche. After an opening like that, I think I need a drink.
Ooh, I got a little little cocktail here. That's the color of my red jacket. And now, damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, we're opening up Teatro Sin Fronteras to make sure we amplify our amazing Latin voices here. And one of the poets, one of the young poets that I've had the great pleasure of working with the last couple of years, here she is, Lynette Luna Tobar. Thank you, Jose. Um, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you to the festival coordinators, organizers um, for having us. Um, I will um, be sharing some poems with y'all. Um, I am an undocumented, illegalized um, woman from Mexico. Uh, I do a lot of um, poetry, spoken word, uh, and I also uh, work a lot with young immigrants in the community. I will, I say that because I'm going to be asking for your support before I leave. Um, so I'm going to start with a um, piece. This is part of um, a couple of pieces under the same title in different parts. This is part one uh, from VIP Amnesia. Part one. I am so grateful to this country that the man who fled his homeland like a desperate crab crawling out of the boiling pot that this country set a fire to eat him whole. Part two. Every morning he rubs himself against the stainless steel of his fridge until it spews cream cheese and fresh juice into his mouth. And he confirms he is loved indeed by his new home. He puts Colombian coffee to his lips, making his heart pump past Southern cone hunger memories. Savoring the warmth, he smiles gleefully. This place is not as bad as they make it out to be. The hum of the AC and the volume high on his flat screen drown out the sounds of frail women and kids banging on the door, grimy nails, scratching glass, begging desperately, please let me in. Uh, this next piece is called Quien Duele al Ultimo, Duele Peor, which translates to he who hurts last hurts worse. I want to take their two fingers, stick them into my side, Hold them there as they grimace and recoil until their shame hurts more than my pain. They who've betrayed me a thousand times and still don't feel God's eyes upon them every time the rooster cries. They who kiss my cheek with empty words at dawn, then bet on my death before they go to sleep. They whose sorrow greed, too heavy to carry, weaves nooses and builds crosses to crucify me. I want to take my blood and rub it on their arms, pour it in their drinks, smear it on their faces, splutter it on their shirts, so they may not rid themselves of me, just as I've had to live with their claws. Crimson marked, so that when a mother sees that red blotched specter on the street, her eyes will follow with pity and horror. Crouching, she will whisper into her child's ear, there goes a man who hates himself. Um, this next one is called, I Love Your Accent. I love your accent. You mean you speak another tongue, maybe two, three, or even four, and learn this other one, a mind fucking grammar puzzle that you solved? Wow, I love your accent. I love that you don't sound like me, and underneath each word you speak, I can hear your home and your family. Wow, I love your accent. I love your sentence testimonies, your convo monuments to yourself, made up of the million instances you tried a word for the first time. You conquered stage fright for years, each and every day of your life. Wow, 
I love your accent. Not like features on my soundtrack, exotic patterns on a background, curious objects to gawk at. I love it like a gold-plated memory, like evidence of dreams, like replanting on the ground my feet, like sister, sad turn happy secrets only your eyes share with me. Wow, I love your accent. This um, last one, um, a lot of the poetry I write is, is based on personal experience, but also a lot of things I see in my community. And uh, this last piece um, came from uh, working with, with young immigrants in the greater New Orleans area, um, myself and a couple of other people in the community and, and other young undocumented immigrants started a, an annual conference and scholarship fund to support undocumented youth who um, are not allowed to are excluded from federal financial aid and state financial aid, no matter how long they've lived in this country, no matter how much taxes they've play, paid or their families. And so I'm gonna drop a link to our um, Instagram page because we'll be fundraising for them very soon. So please uh, follow us or get in touch with me if you wanna support. Um, this one is called To the Home Girl Who Phoned Us Asking About the Scholarship. I'm calling about the um, scholarships for students for, she points with her tone, tiptoeing, not wanting to touch the word, hoping I just get the point. I say it for her, not to correct, not to aid, not in her place, but in her honor. Undocumented, undocumented. The realest shit can be the most contrived. I know, sis, I know. The label was thrown on our bodies like a dull uniform in this labor camp. But we've cut them up and made flags that restored our pride, weaved them into ropes so we all could climb, sewed banners, stamped across our facts, used the scraps as patches and gauze, built the first cloth, megaphone, and not the last, serving all tablecloths. I know, sis, I know the label was thrown on our bodies like a dull uniform in this labor camp. But now it's ours, sis. Now it's ours. Don't be afraid to have it fill your mouth. Do you pause to say garden because it was once barren land? Do warriors hide their battle scars or tell the tales with delight? Have you forgotten that every day you're at the wheel of a slick getaway car? and they chase you, but they crawl and you fly. Homegirl flaunt that you were left for dead and today you not only live, but fight or dance. Thank you so much. I, Lunette, 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 that poem gets me each time, Lunette. It's so brilliant, Lunette. Thank you, Lunette, for speaking the voice your voice for the poetry from your heart, from your mouth, from your veins, for the poetry that comes from the deep earth of our people who have been labeled unfairly undocumented in a, in a land of stolen, a stolen land, an empire. Let's stand to remember that the first illegal aliens were the Europeans here. So Lynette, thank you. That poem, ah, oh, it moves me. In addition to the fact that Ooh, the piece about the man being thrown as a crab inside the boiling water. Wow. Gracias, Lynette. Gracias. Gracias. Um, to keep the Mexican Chicana vibe going, one of my favorite poets here that I've known for some time, and I actually have uh, her fabulous book. It's like reading a Latina woman's Pablo Neruda. Um, and she's going to have to correct me because I always mess up the title uh, about the fire. Uh, uh, and she can say it for yourself, but um, she could say it for herself. Damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Melinda Palacio. Gracias. And that's how fire is a story waiting. <laughs> and thank you, Tennessee Williams Festival, Lisa Davor, Tracy, and Jose, of course. First poem, Bad Girl. 
A girl hides her mermaid shirt with a cardboard sign. She colored herself, free the kids. After the hot march on a day with no wind or clouds, she will return to the land of innocence and make believe. Wasn't it yesterday her mother marched with her mother, held up a sign, no person is illegal. When a six-year-old boy asked, why is the president mad at us? Innocence is lost. When a tween begs for a Trump piñata, he'll take the one with the flimsy orange streamers falling off, baseball bat included, no need for a birthday. When children and babies are jailed for wearing the wrong skin color, songs and laughter sound strange. No one dares ask the Cat Stevens question. Where do the children play? Too many years into the mind games at the border, and I have a recurring dream, the kind that follows me into wakefulness, a loop of despair. Once again, I am separated from my parents, separated. First, I am a grown woman, jailed with young children. I wake up screaming, I am not an orphan. I have a family. I am American. I awake, but the dream continues, has a separate life of its own. I am a child separated from my parents, unable to speak English let alone defend myself in a courtroom. The one thing I understand is I am a bad girl. I took my friend's marble, a beautiful glass. Swirls of kaleidoscope hold the universe. Does God live at the marble center? I stole the marble, the long trek, my mother's nervousness, the difficult smile, the rushed steps. I know why I am in jail, a bad girl's fate. The immigration officer lets his dog lick his face. I wish someone would hold me as sweetly, nuzzle my neck, tell me I am a good girl. Once upon a time, my mother, once upon a time, my grandmother, once upon a time, the lady jailer reads. What does once upon a time mean to a child in jail? Quien sabe? Unbox me. And the people were told to stay home and isolate. When days turned to months, the lonely took to the streets. Remembered words like revolution, freedom, and viva. They shaped a multilingual future, chose love and sacrifice over comfort and security. You don't know that I am Black. Que todos me dicen el negro llorona. I am your daughter. All you see is a smile in a red dress. Someone who breathes takes up space, respeta mi existencia, o espera resistencia. You know the hidden story. You don't have to pay 23 and me to see there's more than hair color that binds us. While nine months can make a baby, the slow tick-tock can break a man. Iced detention, Tornillo, Texas. Strange hands spoon feed a hungry baby. Lice fall out of their hair like stardust. The girl is my daughter. The girl is your daughter. The girl is ours. No more food for the baby girl. Her celestial call becomes earthen. She turns into a pig. When all the children morph into swine, their puckered lips turn to snouts 
inside hell's version of Wonderland. Then and only then did they bust open the walls that separated them from their parents. Our eyes go dark. And the last poem is from my book, Bird Forgiveness. This is the latest book. The Mermaid of California. All that ocean. Don't drink the water. My grandmother says it straight. I don't like water. We drink Coca-Cola instead. She put Coke in my baby bottle. Oceans gush oil, Pacific and the Gulf of Mexico. All that ocean, don't drink the water. Orleans Parish, St. Bernard and Jefferson warn against brain eating amoebas in New Orleans tap water. The world has never been safe. As a child growing up in Los Angeles, I loved going to the beach. What's not to love? Ocean water crashes, then dies to a whisper of sea foam. She is a show off as she twists, turns, and takes. The ocean does not wait for God's approval. Seagulls squawk as the birds circle for food and treasure. Kids taunt waves with their chair of feet as a familiar song plays softly from a sun-soaked girl's radio. The bronze girl doesn't care if her mother warned of water pollution at the beach. She swims on a dare, ringlets past her shoulders, and bikini strings bounce. Water tickles her feet and she morphs into a mermaid. All that ocean, mermaid, don't drink the water. Thank you. Gracias. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias, Melinda. <laughs> Gracias. So uh, we have a little bit of a change in the schedule uh, because of Maritza's need to um, uh, take care of some very ur urgent family things. So uh, normally Fermin Ceballos would go on. Uh, Fermin, I want you to hold on and I want to bring in Maritza. Maritza, are you available to go on right now? It is okay. Okay, yes. great. Fabulous. Yeah. Let's get you on there, Maritza. Damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, Maritza Mercado Nasis, one of the most amazing dancers and choreographer mm -hmm. that I think deserves a lot, a lot much more credit and due for her work. I've known Maritza for many, many moons. Uh, and because I've lived in New Orleans for 250 years, uh, I've actually worked with her mama, uh, Miss Rocky Narcisse, many moons ago at the CAC. Mm -hmm. Damas y caballeros, Maritza Mercado Narcis. Thank you. And also, full disclosure, my children and cats will probably be in and out of this piece. So, <laughs> you know, here we go. Thank you all. And there he is. So, yes. Thank you all. And I am better with movement than I am with words. So I'll just let this take us in. And if they come in and out, they come in and out.
the ground. I am water under the ground. Water under the ground. I am water under the ground. My blood. My eyes. My guide. My spine. I say untie my tongue. Untie my tongue. I say untie my tongue. My blood. My eyes. My guide. My spine. Thank you. <laughs> I caught it right <laughs> Maritza, gracias. Thank you. Oh, Maritza, your movements, your movement work is always so amazing. Thank you very much, Maritza. Gracias. Thank you. Darling. Thank you for everything that everyone has offered. It's been so lovely and beautiful to be part of all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Maritza. Your aesthetic movements just push it to a higher order. I'm always so grateful to see what you're about to throw down from your little room there, <laughs> from your pod, from your little pod. It's great to see your child. Now, what's the, that's the seven-year-old? What's his name? Yes, Mateo. Mateo, Mateo. Oh With my God. With his goodness. lightsaber. <laughs> With his lightsaber, yeah. Maritza, thank you very much. With everything that you've gone through, we're grateful to have had you. Uh, you. You know, this is a time where we have to be flexible compassionate and patient with each other. We're still in a pandemic crisis. So always wonderful to see you. Give your love to, give my love to your mama when you get a oh, chance to speak to her. You know, I love me some Rocky Narcisse. I know. <laughs> from back in the day, back yeah. in the dia. <laughs> so thank you very much, Marita. Thank you. Thank you all so Happy. much. Thank you. So um, we want to now bring in uh, following with the music, and uh, we're going to bring in El Cantante de la Gente, uh, the, the poet and uh, performer and crooner, Jose Fermin Ceballos. I've known Fermin for some years now, and uh, I'm just going to let him take it away. El Cantante de la Gente, the poet and the crooner of the people's music. Tírale, Fermin. <laughs> Venimos a crecer contigo, no vine a quitarte nada, 
Trabajo de día y de noche. El sol se acuesta en mi espalda. Alegría y sufrimiento. Conmigo traigo mi alma. Y un pedacito de aliento. Antes de juzgarme a mí, tu historia, no niegues a la memoria que tú viniste primero. La tierra nos vio nacer, también nos verá morir. Lo poquito que vivimos, vamos a pasar la feliz. La huella que se quedaron. A lo largo del camino, son parte de las historias que cuentan nuestros vecinos. Son historias verdaderas, gente de piel y hueso por la carretera. Son historias repetidas. Gente que pierde vida buscará de todos lados, de todas partes, de todas partes vengo yo a darte mi cariño, mi alegría, mi tumbao y mi sazón, amor. De todos lados, de todas partes y el sueño americano no es tan fácil, mi hermano, como se ve. De todo lado, de todas partes, de todas partes vengo yo a darte mi cariño. ¿Qué ganas con excluirme? ¿Qué quieres hacer conmigo? Pregúntale a tu conciencia si acaso soy tu enemigo. Tú vienes de todos lados. Venimos de todas partes. Thank you, gracias. Thank you so much. Um, I wanna, I want to say that, that song um, was born in Teatro Sin Frontera. It's the first uh, Teatro Sin Frontera that, that I had with um, Jose Torres Tama. He, He gave me the, you know, that confidence to say, hey, Carnalito, you can uh, write something like powerful hey, for our immigrant community. I know you, you can do it. Say, Jose, it's maybe uh, 10 minutes, 40 minutes left to start a show. I say, I know you can, so try try and do it. And, and, and it's a beautiful song. So yeah, next one called Se Nos Va La Vida, Our Life Is Gone. I wrote that song back in the day when I was a, a college student in Dominican Republic, because I, I, I was and I am, and I keep upset about how the politicians and the, our government systems, um, um, a lot of corruption. So that song is talk about, about that. Se nos va la vida, our life is gone. Uh, let's check the tune. I think I'm okay, but one string is kind of bothering me. Oh yeah, I'm right. That one. Yeah. Yeah, we're we good. We're ready to go now. Su vida y la mía parecían una sola, nos pasábamos el día en la escuela y en la loma, pero luego todo, luego todo fue cambiando, pero se fue a la ciudad y yo me quedé en el campo y de oportunista se puso a politicar 
tiene todo de la nada, de la noche a la mañana, hoy oh, tiene millones de lo que vendió, sino que tiene sin cargo, que el gobierno no nombró, el favoritismo daña nuestra sociedad, cuánta gente como Pedro, millonario y no hace nada, las instituciones Aquí son fincas privadas, aquí todo el que cree que es jefe hace lo que le da la gana. Y mi pueblo sufre más que una simple herida, en busca de sus sus conocidos para vida. Y hoy se nos va la vida, encima de un motoconcho aguantando son todo para poder vivir. Se nos va la vida, tirado en el hospital, sin salud ni educación. ¿Dónde vamos a parar? Se nos va la vida, a todos los cuboneros corren bajo el aguacero para poder vivir. Se nos va la vida, rodando de aquí para allá, afanados por tener lo que nunca llegará. Se nos va la vida a los de la zona franca que trabajan y trabajan, pero no nos pagan nada. Este pueblo necesita una nueva sociedad. Está la justicia de corazón, todos se nos maltraten más. Y tú que eres ciudadano o buen hermano, abre los ojos ya. La la ley, la la ley, la la la. El futuro algo mejor nos traerá. La la ley, la la ley, la la la. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Se nos va la vida, se nos va la vida, se nos va la vida. So that Thank translates you. into life, life can pass you by, ¿no? Se nos va la vida. Oye, gracias, canalito. Gracias, siempre, siempre gracias. I'm so grateful that uh, that incredible tune, uh, Yo Vengo de Todo Lado, came out of our first Taco Truck Theater, Teatro Sin Fronteras Incarnation. Yeah. Back in 2016, those are the performances. You were part of that early troupe. So I'm always grateful for your beautiful poetic words. And for those of you who may be bilingually challenged, the words for um, Se nos va la vida, of course, but Yo vengo de todo lado are, are really beautiful. El sueño americano no es fácil, mi hermano, no? Right? The, the yeah. American dream is not easy, my, my, my brother. Even, even for Americans. So. Right, right. And hey, remember, Jose, uh, if it's possible, it's one more thing that I want to uh, tell about the song. Just it's, it's just a short, no, won't be long. As that song now became a, a, the anthem of the T, of the National TPS Alliance. So I'm so happy about it. And that involved about uh, 13, 18 countries from uh, Asia, um, Central South America, and uh, some. Um, countries and um yeah right Three countries, uh, i guess in africa too a few countries right. so, so and you're, I'm talking so about, about you're talking about the ntp the the temporary status yes yes, yes. The national yeah yeah and of course the chump the agent orange the job of the hot pimp he did that he did away with that i worked with some uh, beautiful Salvadorian immigrants back in 2018 around that. But thank you for me, and I'm always so deeply grateful. No, I'm so happy. Th thank you for having me. Gracias. Gracias, gracias, Canalito. So um, I want to, uh, uh, before I bring Jen, I'm going to throw down a little piece here called And What If After So Many Words for You. Uh, it's just a little piece that is actually my response to the Christian to the Confederate flag waving Christian, Christian militias. And before I forget, I just wanna make sure I thank Lisa Damore. This conversation actually began on Facebook to, to get to this point with Jennifer Pagan posting something about the Tennessee Williams Festival and the, the tragic nature of, of the posting of everyone that was involved that was predominantly white with a few black uh, writers peppered in there. So change can happen if we have a will and we have to have a will 
post COVID, we want to come into a different national arts and local arts landscape where we are all included because it's challenging to be a Latin American artist here or Latin immigrant artist because uh, it's the, the cultural landscape is defined in such a binary code. Uh, and certainly we need our African American people. But if you look at, we need our African American poets and performers to be highlighted. Of course, uh, it's a 60% still city, even though gentrification is happening in a brutal manner. But let's make sure we look at so many of the arts organizations here that are predominantly Eurocentric and white run. So we have to be part of a change. So I'm grateful for Lisa to begin as a board member to begin happening because this is the steps to make sure that we have that cultural change. You can champion diversity on your websites, but unless you make it happen, you know, and literally have an action of this nature, this is the most Latin, uh, Latino artist, Latinx artist that you've had at the Tennessee Williams Festival, probably in its history. So it's a step forward and we got to make more giant steps that way. And I want to make sure that you understand that I set up uh, and I'm glad that Maritza was able to come in because I wanted to honor our women, our Latinx poets and women at the beginning of the program so that they can get uh, the necessary attention and applaud that they deserve for their regal poetry. This is a piece dedicated to the Christian militias um, who, you know, Confederate flag waving Christian militias. The United States is the only, is the only country in the entire universe that has on its monetary note, on its $1 bill, mentioning God, in God we trust, because we know that this is the actual religion. And what if after so many words, and what if after, what if after so many words, so many words, what if after so many words, and what if after so many words, I remain knee deep in redneck air in urine, flowing putrid through bowels and veins of televangelists who proclaim Jesus, 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 right shotgun with a rubber flag, hiding guns and ammo in a Chevy pickup truck, and they put together an infomercial announcing, announcing, announcing the second coming will be brought to you by hamburger helper. What if after so many words? What if after so many words? So many words. What if after so many words? I am sinking in a quicksand rhetoric. I am sinking in a quicksand rhetoric of Christian politicians. I am sinking in a quicksand rhetoric of Christian politicians who have jailed my genitals with census litigation and have torched my NEA award winning charcoal drawings or Virgin Mary Barbie in a red bikini riding a Harley whose only crime was only crime was only crime was coming on to crucifixion can through the 12 stages of a technological cross with a digital LED display that reads Jesus. Jesus, Jesus buys more in seas. And what if after so many words, what if after so many words, 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 what if after so, after so many, after so many, after so many words, the righteous priest, an artist in his spare time, an artist in his spare time, draws trust from his altar boy's bleeding, transforming their sacred wine into haunting memories with just a drop of water for their sacrifice. While his male order army of ordained disciples bomb another clinic, bomb another clinic, bomb another clinic, bomb another clinic to rescue unborn lives, unborn lives, killing more mother goddesses in the process of patriarchal explosions with sound, with sound, with sound, like screams from thunder up above. God God save America on the evening news because the curfew is enforced by fear. Huh. Just a little something, something, something. Just a little something, something, something. Damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen. My favorite Honduranian of the Teatro Sin Fronteras landscape and uh, are actually New Orleans born Honduran heritage playwright and performer, Jennifer Pagan. <laughs> Say it like Pagan, Pagan, Jennifer. Pagan, that's right. You know that everyone says pagan, and when I was in high school, I was doing some 
snooping in my parents' um, file cabinet, and I found an accent over my dad over the last syllable of my dad's A, and I started saying Pagan, and I told him, "You have to say Pagan." <laughs> So anyway, um, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Jose, for putting this together. We love Teatro Sin Fronteras. Um, as Jose said, I am of Honduran descent. My father and my grandmother, mi abuelita, they came to New Orleans in 1951 from La Ceiba, Honduras, uh, with my grandfather, who worked with the United Fruit Company. Um, I have a strong affinity to the play written by Tennessee Williams. Uh, known as the Rose Tattoo. Um, one, it premiered in Chicago in 1950 on my birthday, December 29th. I was not born in 1950, but my birthday is December 29th. And that character uh, of Serafina reminds me very much of my grandmother. So I'm going to be doing a short piece from a, my one woman show called Shoebox Lounge that uh, my I play nine different characters. And one of those characters who, um, appears prominently in the play is my um, abuelita, Rosa Dolores Pineda. And um, as she would say, uh, she's from Honduras, but she insists her family is from Espain. So um, she gave me a lot of advice over the years. And um, one of the reasons she reminds me of Serafina is because uh, there's a scene where Serafina is, um, grabs Jack and puts him in front of the Virgin Mary. And I had brought some flowers to her altar um, she had an altar of Mary in her house above a high boy dresser, very high, under this glass bell jar. And you would bring flowers and things to give to Mary and the saints. And one day I brought some flowers from the neighbor's yard. And the next day she called me and she said, Nene, did you steal these flowers? And I was like, uh, no, Abuelita, I didn't steal those flowers. And she said, don't lie to me because the virgin, she knows. Those flowers están muertos, baby. You stole them. Don't lie to me. So she gave me a lot of, she scared the you know what out of me, um, much like Jack was scared in the rose tattoo. But um, without further ado, I give you uh, a piece from my show called Shoebox Lounge. Nene, you need special shoes for dancing. Only the best, baby. You need a strong heel for balance, but not too high. Just enough to lift your culo and give your legs a nice long line for the man's eyes. Hmm? On Saturday nights, Abuelita would take me dancing in the French Quarter at the Grecian Blue Room. We would dance flamenco and salsa and merengue. She grabs my hand, spins me out onto the dance floor. No, I'm 11. I've just read, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. I got my period and I'm kind of curious about sex. She spins me around, grabs me and says, Nene, you listen to me. You don't have to do anything you don't want to ever with a boy. If he tries too much, you kick him in his huevos and you run, okay? And I mean, everybody wants to dance with Abuelita. She has this light that just shoots out of her. And she is all I can think about as I sit and I watch the CNN news coverage of our beloved city drowning on August 29th, 2005. You see, no one in my family ever leaves for hurricanes. But as she used to say, she was a very good swimmer as a girl. Because in La Ceiba, Honduras, when the American ships would dock in the harbor, she would run down there and she would die for the silver dollars that they would flip in the air for luck. But she's 78 and she has a bad knee and there's no way that she can make it to the roof of her house. A month goes by and I get a phone call. Nene, nobody will listen to me. I want to get my things from my house, okay? I pray to the Blessed Mother to bring me somebody. I need you to come and get my shoes. To Papi? To Papi is getting my china. I don't need no goddamn china. What I need are my shoes. All I want are my chocolate brown alligator ferragamos, baby. So I had to Lakeview. And there, as I make my way down the eerily quiet street, I see her house. The door is swollen shut, 
Some of the windows had been broken to let out the stench, and there were a few pieces of furniture out on the side yard. I climb through and topple in to the broken bedroom window, and everything is toppled over. It's wet, moldy, green. There are brown and black stalactites growing out of the walls, and there is a water line up to here. And that's when I see her. Sitting atop Grandma's high boy dresser is the Virgin, the Blessed Mother, underneath that 30 inch high glass bell jar, surrounded with flowers of weddings and funerals and birthdays and christenings. And I can't imagine any family gatherings in this house and I'm longing for the scent of her arroz con camarones or her polla con yuca. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And I head straight for her closet. And there, in her closet, are all of her beautiful dresses that were hand-stitched by her seamstress, Caridad, and they are melting off of their hangers. Underneath a soggy pile of dresses, I find her chocolate brown alligator ferragamos, and they are covered in a quarter of an inch of mold. And next to it, is my communion dress. And I remember going down to Canal Street with Caridad and with Abuelita to Kraus, where we picked out the most beautiful, pure, pristine, white, tiny flower pattern lace to make my dress that had a high, high ruffled collar, long sleeves with ruffles and a pale pink ribbon that came around my waist with two little roses that made me feel like a princesa. And it's ruined. It is freckled with mildew and it is heavy with a muddy musk that suffocates our city that was once so recently perfumed with sweet olive and magnolias and gardenias after a hard summer rain. Hmm. I... <sighs> Abuelita. She had given me a beautiful pair of pristine white double strap patent leather Mary Janes for my first communion. Oh, they were so beautiful. Nene, these are very special shoes, honey. They are blessed by the Virgin. You cannot wear them until the day of your first communion. You have to wait, okay? Do you understand? In the end, this? Oh, si, sí, Abuelita. Entiendo. But I can't wait. I want to be like Mary. I want to be filled with grace and I want Jesus inside of me. So I put on my blessed by the virgin white patent leather Mary Janes and I go to church with Aunt Lolita the week before my first Holy Communion. Listen, Jesus. Okay, look, I know I should have waited, but I just need to be beautiful and, and graceful like Mary, and I need to have you inside of me. And besides, Aunt Lolita said all I have to do is say amen. And there I am at the altar, and the priest's hand is coming towards me. It's coming closer and closer, and there you are, Jesus. You're floating through the air like a tiny flying saucer, and angels are humming in my ears. You keep coming closer and closer, sucking out my breath, drawing my head closer, opening my mouth. The body of Christ. A amen? And there you are, Jesus, your body is on my tongue. Oh God, what do I do? Should I chew Jesus? Oh, or will that hurt him? Oh, I don't know. What if I burst into flames like the Holy Spirit? Oh, what do I do? Jesus is on my tongue and ah, uh, oh. Jesus is stuck to the roof of my mouth. <laughs> and Lolita says, just chew it up and swallow it. And Jesus, you taste sweet, a little stale, but sweet. And I can't wait to tell Abuelita. Nene, what the hell is wrong with you? Hmm? Are you possessed or something, huh? I told you to wait to wear those shoes that are blessed by the virgin. And Lolita, how can you let her steal communion? 
But Abuelita, I didn't steal it. I knew the password. Thank you. Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I love your abuelita. I love your abuelita, your abuelita. And that, <laughs> the whole thing about Jesus, that just kills me each time I, I see it. And your abuelita's accent, I love her. You bring her back to life whenever you do that voice. Mm, I really, I think it's a beautiful way to honor. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. And honor, and honor your Honduran heritage. You know, we have to understand it. You know, it's often a joke in Tegucigalpa, the capital, that there are more Hondurans in New Orleans in Kenner than there are actually in Tegucigalpa, the capital, right? Because we forget. And I didn't know that you you had the family connection to the United Fruit Company. And the United Fruit Company did brutal things. And, uh, you know, their building is on Canal Street. It used to be the, it's now the Insectatorium. But um I think it's really important to honor that Honduran heritage, and we often forget the same way we forget about the Vietnamese people here. But you know, we have to remember that actually dictatorships uh, that you know that ruled Hondurans in a brutal way were set up from New Orleans, from Canal Street, with the governorship here, and uh, they set up dictators that actually ruled and brutalized people for that fruit, for the bananas, right? So, thank you. Thank you to uh, thank you for honoring your abuelita and your heritage. So, um, damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, as we move forward with Teatro Sin Fronteras, I'm going to bring uh, my honorary Latino brother from the African diaspora uh, into place. Um, Quest and I have known each other for some time as cultural warriors and poets and activists. And one of the things about Quest is that. You know, you could be a wordsmith on stage and you could drop and, and do your poems on, you know, many platforms. But in the tradition of people like Amiri Baraka, in the tradition of people like Langston Hughes, in the tradi tradition of people like Ernesto Cardenal, and like Pablo Neruda, there's, a, there's the poet's duty to also engage in physical activism and scribe, Quest, Michael Moore is one of these amazing individuals. He's one of the leaders, the catalyst for taking down NOLA. And I remember being there in 2015, documenting when uh, they were trying to bring down that odious, you know, Robert E. Lee statue. I mean, come on, let's, stay, like, let's think about that 80 foot monument of a phallus celebrating an actual slaver and a traitor to the union. And I was there documenting and it was amazing, you know, to see, and that's when I first met Angela Kinglaw, documenting, and then Quest always eloquently throws it down why the removal of such statues are so important. And we have to bring them all down. We have to bring down Andrew Jackson, because I can't get no satisfaction until we take down Andrew Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Caballeros, my brother from another mother, a scribe called Quest. Give it up, Tato. I see yo, modupio, gracias, mi hermano. Give thanks. Um, uh, uh, and yeah, thank you for bringing in the nation, man. I'm your honorary representative of the Black nation, of the uh, African diaspora, standing in uh, tall solidarity, you know, I'm sitting down, um, with my Latinx brothers, sisters, and siblings. And um, thank you, Jose, for putting this on and allowing my voice up into this space. So um, everything said in solidarity today, I'm gonna give you all four poems. Um, and I wanna dedicate uh, at least this part of the set um, the last two poems in, in particular to uh, two particular forces. One, the force of Mami Wata, Yemeya. We see uh, very present right now. It's, it's flooded in my backyard as we speak. That's Oya actually. But, um, you know, that water presence is, is very much amongst us and with us right now um, as we're cleansing out the, the old way, the old, old paradigm. At least that's how I want to claim that, name that, and aim that. And I also want to name the presence of, um, of the force of uh, the movement for the residents of Gordon Plaza for fully funded relocation for the residents of Gordon Plaza. Um, you know, they are, they've been living on toxic soil in uh, the ninth ward for 30 years now, lost three residents last year in the middle of a pandemic. They've lost almost 20 over the years uh, due to the toxic soil that they're living on. And one thing that unfortunately bonds us all besides white inferiority is what I call it. Um, master supremacy manifest as toxicity, as the very toxicity that embeds itself in the soil, is the capitalistic 
uh, structure, the capitalist economic system that is the vehicle for all these uh, all these uh, engines of oppression that, that keep us down, black, brown, yellow, um, you know, every color of the spectrum, every gender, every sexual orientation, all under patriarchal white supremacist uh, capitalism. And so um, what we are coming upon is a moment where the earth itself is in danger because of all of this toxicity. And if nothing else called us together, we better start paying attention to that. And so um, the last couple of poems are dedicated to that, but let me just get into it. I'm gonna give y'all a couple of poems and uh, let you be on your way. Haiku, good white people. There are no good white people, only good people undoing their whiteness. The sound of weapons being formed. And they kept asking why all our poems sounded the same, while all our words wrapped themselves around race and gender, oppression and revolution like there was nothing else. While the threads of our tropes wove themselves into ropes, knotted nooses fastened around the swollen necks of guilty men. While our voices clang from microphones like heavy metal against rock, the heat in our throats, the smoldering cinder in a welder's lab. Metaphors melding worlds of pain unknown to them. So our anger be alloy of both black and poor, poor and queer, queer and woman, woman and trans, all things spewed hot and rich from the earth born unrich and unwhite. We be lava's offspring, condensed by time and struggle into things rock hard and impenetrable, broken by struggle and melted by time into all things fluid, malleable, welded by words and the weapons too hard for you to fuck with. So now we something like tools of battle. Similarly slicing through midair like swords built for this, it's funny. All that whiteness knows of war, seems like they know the sound of weapons being formed, of distant armies gathering, of infantries collecting, like karmic debt at your front door. This next piece is, uh, these next two pieces very specifically for, again, Mami Wata Yemiya, Mofeti Fon Fon, highest reverence to the goddess of water. Uh, that replenishes us, that we are mostly comprised of, and that we uh, quite often to fail, and uh, we quite often fail to uh, recognize and venerate, and um, in, in, in so doing also venerating the feminine uh, essence from which we all come as well. Uh, this is the wind in the water, take selfies in my mirror, and flu attention. Pardon the rivers on my face, but I've seen too many closed into earth without their insides ever seeing the light of day. What say you when? Your lover's womb is the middle passes the ancestors never made their way through. When spirits are thrown overboard before they ever reach shore. Lines under my eyes all silt and sink. Every poet's words about motherland or sea crossing was a holy hand of nature, was Oya's breath whispering gales of the decades old levees behind my eyes. Watched parts of me crumble into an ocean wide as God's mouth last year. Watched infinity pick its teeth with my little traumas. Marathon got a little brisk thinking no one's waiting at the finish line, but learn how to pat them thighs and firm up the hind parts regardless. Of course, my masculinity's fragile. I said to everyone in particular, ain't shit but water and sand grown old. Tried a fresh new look last year and the water had its way with me. Got beached whales on my cheeks, the shape of my daddy's last night and the nights he said it's over. Least I got time stamps for my grief on this course. My old self passed on the baton last year, said the sack of brick can die with him. I'm trying to adjust to the weight loss. Something about feeling light as a feather makes me feel naked and afraid of heights at the same damn time. Yeah, sure, it was me the whole time, I said to everyone in particular. Poetry is therapy session, is public performance or service announcement. Take your pick, everyone's invited. This avalanche slowly is brought to you by sporous sickness going viral, meets another snuff tape gone the same, meets mildew around the yellow edges of once sacrosanct paper holding the pictures of dead old white men, meets the chained and bound descendants of the chained and bound, locked in the belly of a beast packed tight as undigested food and a raging sea rising with the ferment of ancestors gone too soon, which brings me back to that levee behind my eyes. Never stood a chance. You know, some of my best laid plans 
This year's resolutions are small fish blurred beneath the rivers falling from my face. I can almost see clearly now. My face is the beach after the storm. Best laid plans, all karmic driftwood mixed with toppled infrastructure. Ego is a house meant to be broken. Which way from here? I asked everything in particular. The wind said, follow the water. There's a fluid phantom at our feet, whispering of things to come. The city is a sinking ship like all the world. Sinkholes carved in the hull of this vessel, glimpsing and impending worlds below. How much longer can we float? Wetlands fading beneath us like a black boy's tapered edges, like his granddaddy's hairline, like a Kentucky mountaintop. Say the whole world coming full circle. Say we becoming ourselves. Say we're going to be what we made of for we know it. Say the human body is 60% water. The planet, home to 7 billion human bodies, is 71% water. Say the apple don't fall far from the tree. The plankton don't crawl far from the sea. We land dwellers be mostly at home in society's riverine come hearkening back to our aquatic beginnings like babes to the teat of mommy water that birthed us, gorging ourselves on our very source and we are what we eat. So you don't eat, you don't work, you don't work, you don't eat. But what happens when the fruit of your labor is a harvest of rot, is a gross yield of corpses on the land, is a body broken at the hands of capitalist greed and the soil we toil, seep sickness and a river run red with the blood of the living. When the water tries to tell us its story, it chokes on itself. Can't speak beyond the uranium in its lungs, the sewage in its gut. Tries crooning a blues about the lead in its belly through its oil heavy throat, but just gargles up a blackened mumble about the cadavers on its tongue, smothered in saran wrap. And we drink this water and we speak this water and we are this water, this sick body trying to heal itself to envision a horizon beyond all this infirmary, but can't see beyond the flood lines and our eyes leak water at the sight of lost loved ones whose bodies held too much of what the water did. Ask the San Juan River about Navajo cancer rates in Arizona. Ask a grandmother in Flint how much working class sweat it take to fill a number two pencil. Ask a mother with three jobs in New Orleans how many pencils it take to match the lead in her son's brain. Can he bubble in an answer to the test of telekinesis? Ask the asshole of this country what it got to say to the mouth and do oil rig teeth. Louisiana tells Michigan we the same shit, just different toilet and texture. Ask an aquifer in Lake Michigan what its life amount to when it say, ask Nestle. Nestle say the water gives freely, but for you, it'll cost. The darker the skin, the higher the premium. Black Lives Matter and such. Ask 10,000 black homes in Detroit the price of they dried up pipelines in a pandemic, at least the cost of our skins, they say. Ask broken land with the endless sea costs. Off coast, they see my cracked jaw and receding hairline. Florida opens its mouth, a banshee unleashed. All black and gums and muted screams. 1.4 billion receipts fall out. Say tweet, see 25,000 sinkholes in 10 years. See 27 purchased politicians dangling from Dallas side nooses. See the ground pummeled back into its source, the land. A cracked jaw threatening to swallow its whole watch it sink like falling stock and employment rates in a depression. Watch sorrow fill the streets. The skies as bravado and rage as the sea rises like a people. Tired of the weight on their backs, their backs sprouting wings, feathered by the water protecting keepers of this land. The world's on fire, they say. Whisper beneath our feet, say, don't worry. The water's coming. The people too. Thank wow. you. You're killing it, brother. You're killing it. So many fabulous metaphors. And again, like we talked about, you know, that line about the difference between New Orleans and Flint, the, the, the you know, the, the mouth and the a-hole of the Mississippi River, the way it all runs down. That's there to remember uh, what was it we talked about it during rehearsal last time. Um, it was in, uh, in the Michael Moore film where Obama drank the water and we can't forget that you know the same yes. way i always break people's you know and sometimes i have to break my my african american people's romanticism for obama you know because he was the deporter in chief but he actually drank that polluted water when he could have brought attention and he drank the water and he said it was okay and that right there continued that atrocity against our people there in flint michigan and we got to think about look at the pandemic detroit New Orleans, right? And New York City. And let's make sure we understand that it's killing black and brown people at rates that are much higher than its crises within the white Eurocentric community. Yes. 
Yes, I love yes. what you said about white people and, and a spirit would say that it's white mediocrity disguised as white supremacy. Yes. So thank yeah. you. Yes, and I'll take it further. You know, I say white uh, inferiority as a challenge to all white people's humanity because whiteness is a political designation and construct that was designed to further the capitalism that has your black president drinking poison water and a rainbow imperialist cabinet for your, your, your new president who was his partner in war crime. So it does not matter. Capitalism delivers destruction uh, uh, unilaterally. It can come in any color, but like you said, it always comes to black and brown people the hardest in the world. Yes. So it's and a challenge indigenous to us. people. Let's not forget our native and indigenous, indigenous people. people. Yes, Let's yes. Sure. And for those of you from the literary festival, if this is too political for you, this is the reality. This is what poets speak. This is the job of the poet to speak the truth to the perverse abuse of power in the I United say. States of amnesia. Come on I now. Say. If I, I get say. excited, it's because I get excited. I say, oh, brother, man. I love you. You know that. You know my heart is with you always. Love Thank you, you back, for brother. your wordsmithing. Thank you for dropping the metaphors. Thank you for your enlightenment. Come yes. on. Thank Come God on. For the space. Now. Teatro so, sin fronteras, baby. Theater without borders. And now, thinking about the water and thinking about Yemaya, one of my favorite incarnations of Yemaya in this city is Margie Perez. I love me some Margie Perez. Uh, you know, Margie Perez and I um, go back to like the Pisces party a couple of years ago, and I got to see the amazing group that we don't see enough of, the Yemayayas. And it was Margie, Sula, Marta, Alguera, and all these other sisters that were throwing down the spiritual opening. So, damas y caballeros, without any further ado, we bring on Margie Perez of Cuban heritage. Tírale, Margie. Oh, thank you. Muchas gracias, Jose. Oh my gosh, all this wonderful talent. This has been such a great show. Um, I want to thank everybody at the Tennessee Williams Festival, everybody tuning in right now. This has been such a great night. Um, I was curious to know if Tennessee Williams had ever been to Cuba. And so I did a little Googling and uh, I found out that he, when he was living in Key West, he made numerous trips to Cuba. And uh, cause back in those days, you could just ferry the 90 miles to Havana. And so um, on this one notable trip in April of 1959, he had lunch with writers, um, Kenneth Tynan, George Plimpton, and for the first and only time, Ernest Hemingway. They got together at the, um, at the Floridita in Old Havana. That's where the daiquiri was invented. And uh, it was, uh, they had, they, um, there's a bust of Hemingway at the end of the bar. It's still there. And Hemingway pointed out that, um, that it was um, always covered during Lent. And so that just seemed appropriate. And uh, so he ordered a round of his namesake cocktail, the Papa Doble. And so we are gonna do a couple of songs that they probably may have listened to as they were enjoying their lobster lunch and sparkling conversation. So uh, let's uh, hit it, Billy. Thank you. 
The other tune we're gonna do is a song called uh, Cow Cow Mani Picao. <laughs> so much. So it turns out when George Clinton asked uh, Hemingway what he thought of Tennessee Williams, he said, well, he was confused as to why he would have worn a captain's hat to lunch, but he's a damn good playwright. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's so <laughs> funny. I love that little story. Thank you, Margie. Thank you. Uh, it gives me such great pleasure to be able to curate a show of this nature. I'm grateful for Tracy Cunningham so that we can mix in our poets, our playwrights, our musicians to make sure that we celebrate Latin culture because New Orleans has an incredible heritage and link, especially to Havana. The brutal slave trade was actually the slave triangle it went from Havana to New Orleans to Veracruz. I've done that research as a renegade scholar, like again, it's the Spanish quarter. It's a wrongful moniker to call it the French quarter. I'm gonna leave you all with a little bit of dedication because we have to remember that this city was reconstructed post Katrina 15 years plus by Latin American immigrant workers, many of them undocumented, thousands. I escaped on a stolen school bus three days after the levee speech. That was on the same bus that Alan Toussaint was on, escaping the social chaos. I came back a month later and all of our brown hands with our brown people were putting on blue tarps. So this is dedicated, especially to the immigrant women. And if you haven't noticed, I've done a costume change. This is a high value production. Look, look at the different bandanas I've been wearing. All right, some jokes I do just for me. Here we go. Dedicated to our immigrant women. I 
I went down to St. James Infirmary, saw my caramel brown baby there. She was an undocumented immigrant worker. She had cleaned out the Superdome and convention center, but nobody, 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 nobody was there to cry for her. Sin papeles se murió trabajando por una miseria de dólares, su sudor y su sangre regalando. She was living in a parallel universe, in a bizarre science fiction reality, ubiquitous and invisible simultaneously reconstructing the city that care and Bush forgot. But like much of her brown Latino family, her pain and suffering doesn't mean a lot to the likes of you and you and gringos generally. Era una mujer mestiza invisible. Para los blancos en general, como mucha de su gente indocumentada, sufriendo en la plena oscuridad, aguantando brutalidad policial y deportaciones de la pinche inmigración. I went down to St. James Infirmary. My body overcome by grief, but I'm here to tell her story of those of my brown paper back people because it's my, my destiny. After seeing my caramel brown baby there, dead at St. James Infirmary, I went down to the river and cried some more. With tears, I planned this performance for her revenge. I went down to St. James Infirmary because I create from pain. Ooh, another version for the lexicon. And you, you Agent Orange of Chaos, you making America hate again for the post, the post trauma that we have to experience after your four years, we are in a new period of reconstruction. You, you Agent Orange of Chaos with your orange comb over, hiding the many burning crosses on fire, hiding the many burning crosses on fire, hiding the many burning crosses on fire that ignited to fear of fever pitch every time you gave another speech to hate America again. You and your deplorable minions with previous Jefferson Beauregard sessions at your side, a living monument to the Confederacy who scripted this law your zero towns policy in 20 18, you with children in cages, you. In my universe, there's no guacamole for immigrant haters. There's no guacamole for immigrant haters. There's no, there's no guacamole for immigrant haters. No guacamole for immigrant haters because you can't love the food and dehumanize the cooks. No guacamole for immigrant haters. No guacamole for immigrant haters. No guacamole for immigrant haters. And you, you agent orange of chaos and those deplorable minions, the 71 million who voted for you and those who stormed the Capitol, a riot waving that Confederate flag. You, you can't even go. You, there's no guacamole for immigrant haters. And you, you can't even go near the chips. No guacamole for immigrant haters, baby. No guacamole for immigrant haters. And this is all led up to a commercial because if you love the shirts, there's no guacamole for immigrant haters t-shirts that we have for sale. You can Google no guac shirts and you can order them. Thank you very much. I'm deeply grateful to be able to share this amazing amount of Latin cultural talent. Let's make sure that we break down that binary uh, cultural arts plantation that New Orleans suffers from so much. Let's make sure we invite also our Vietnamese community. That's an immigrant community. And with that, let's there to remember. And my heart goes out to our Asian immigrant people and those who were just murdered in Atlanta. And we have to make sure that we understand that there, there are hate crimes that have been inspired by this agent orange of chaos, this hater in chief to make America hate again. And we are under a new period of reconstruction. Let's there to remember. And there's been so many crimes against our undocumented immigrants, the same way there were just crimes against our Asian immigrant and the fact that there's so much Asian hate. But remember, above all, love is radical, people. Love is radical. Love is radical. El amor es radical. I leave you with that. El amor es radical. Oh, teatro sin fronteras, baby. Theater without borders. Let's make sure we remember that the entire idea of borders, that's a Eurocentric colonial fetish. Thank you. Gracias.